In the headlines, forestry officials increasingly concerned over Dominica's dwindling mountain chicken population. One political party calls for a proactive stance against the gun violence in the country. And the walk from Tibet to Cabritz as hiking clubs observe Caribbean Wellness Day on Saturday. I am Andrea Luby with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. strong we are resilient and we will get through this together but these are stressful times and it's important to also practice good self-care it's normal to feel overwhelmed anxious or afraid but there is hope reach out to someone connect with your friends stay in touch with your community and know that you are not alone we're in this together this is a public service announcement from the dominica red cross Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. Thank you for staying with us. First up, growing concern among forestry officials at the country's dwindling mountain chicken population. Julian Morris has that story. The increased anxiety as Dominica prepares to observe International Mountain Chicken Day on Sunday, 13th September. Dominica's once healthy mountain chicken or crapo population was almost eliminated by the chytrid fungus over 16 years ago. Hurricane Maria also dealt a blow to the population with severe impact on the country's landscape. Education officer in the Forestry Division, Janelle Brisbane, says recent research shows Dominica's mountain chicken population is not as healthy as once thought. We used to think that there was like a hundred or so mountain chicken left and now we think it's 50 or under. Yeah, so um, there's a few places, there are a few places in Dominica that are doing really well with mountain chicken. They're holding on strong. Um, but all the other areas that once had mountain chicken, it's kind of been fluctuating. Like sometimes we'll get reports of a mountain chicken here. Um, and then the next year we'll see none. We had three prime sites for mountain chicken. Um, but due to recent development, uh, yeah, we weren't really aware of at the time. Um, it seems like that has killed off that population. Usually, the division would recognize Mountain Chicken Day with a visit to schools or hosting exhibitions at key points. However, due to COVID-19 and safety protocols, this year's observance is being moved to an online platform. The COVID-19 pandemic and subsequent lockdown earlier in the year also affected the field research done by the division. Well, first of all, with the lockdown, you know animals don't wait for us, huh? So when the lockdown came, when the curfew came, and we, it, it took a long time for us to get our passes. Um, yeah, that was that was the issue um, because the the lockdown came when the mountain chicken breeding season was starting. Yeah, and that's when we really find the mountain chicken. So um, we missed a lot of valuable data this year. Like we've heard them this year already. Um, we know, you know, roughly where they are, how many are calling in certain areas. Um, but to actually be able to go out there and catch a frog and collect data, that time has kind of passed. Mountain chicken, or crapo as it is called locally, was once considered Dominica's unofficial national dish and is now a critically endangered species. Hunting, poor farming practices and land encroachment are among the factors which have contributed to the dwindling mountain chicken population. Brisbane believes Dominicans can still take certain actions to help preserve and eventually restore the mountain chicken population. It means that we as an island need to put more effort into conservation because um, I think if we had done that from the start, we would be in a totally different position today. Um, I know Forestry has definitely you know, tried, they had the facility, they've been having field work activities, they've done a lot of outreach. But I think it's going to take a lot of creative measures. And I think one of the problems we've come across is a lack of um, 
um, real funding is what I like to say. The conservation field is very underfunded, but you know, like a lot is required of us because to be very honest, without nature, we ourselves are nature, we're not going to survive. In more top stories, the head of Advanced Global Partners, Kenny Green, says the soon-to-be-launched entrepreneurship visa program could be a game-changer for Dominica. Under this program, foreign investors who start a small business or invest in an existing one are granted a resident permit. The program is expected to provide an alternative source of funding for new and existing business ventures. Kenny Green has been appointed to lead the committee charged with advancing this initiative. We are going to be leading, as I said, in the Caribbean in this, mm -hmm. in this initiative, and I expect to see copycats uh, from, from now on. Um, I think people need to also prepare themselves for success. In other words, look at the standards of the accommodations, look at the services that you have, the, mm -hmm. the things that you provide, and look towards um, mm -hmm. uh, being able to offer those services to people who are going to demand a standard that we are not normally used to locally. Um, so prepare yourselves because when it comes, you do not want to be left behind. There are marked differences between the entrepreneurship visa, which provides residency by investment, and the citizenship by investment or CBI program. The CBI makes uh, no, it, it makes no, uh, uh, it, it makes no demand mm -hmm. on the applicant for residency. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons for their popularity. As you know, there are many different CBI programs in the world, um, over 40 at last mm -hmm. count. And, and so therefore, the, the fundamental difference is that as an RBI, the entrepreneur visa requires that the applicant spend substantial time in Dominica, uh, 90 days and for, for each calendar year. Mm -hmm. And that, like other RBIs, means that the, the, the applicant has to become a resident here, has to become a consumer here, has to become lodged here. And that has a totally different impact. It's, it's a different requirement, a mm. totally different impact on a, a different client as well. Under the entrepreneurship visa program, investments could be made in an existing business, joint venture, or a startup in Dominica. In other developments, an appeal to Dominicans not to become numb to gun violence in the country. The Alternative People's Party has spoken out on the most recent act of gun violence in the country, which left 22-year-old Dylan Alexander of Scottsdale dead after a shooting incident in that community Monday night. Interim Finances and Secretariat Director of the APP, Kendra Stephen, says more needs to be done to tackle gun violence in the country. Fellow mothers, sisters, aunts, fathers, brothers, uncles and sons, Please, do not get numb about the spate of killings on our island. This is not how things are supposed to be. As a mother, I pray that no other mother goes through this pain and lament. As a Dominican, I ask, why are we not doing more to protect our children? The society that we live in has become one which is obviously sickening. Crime and violence are definitely on the increase and it seems as if those who should really care do not do a good job in showing so. To this end, Ms. Stephen is calling on mothers of the country to join the movement of mothers, an initiative which she is spearheading to help curb gun violence in Dominica. We need to protect our young men and boys from this increasing scourge of planned execution cell murders. In light of this, I am asking for a movement of mothers, a movement dubbed MOM, to step forward and make representation to the authority of law and order in Dominica. Through my Alternative People's Party APP platform, I am assuming the responsibility to spearhead this MOM initiative, and I ask that Dominican mothers join their voices with mine and the other mothers of APP in a way that the world will hear our outcry. Enough is enough. On to educational matters, Prime Minister Skerritt says government will improve its oversight and the management of its financial assistance program for students wishing to pursue university education overseas. The Prime Minister continues to highlight his government's record in terms of scholarships and other financial support for Dominican students here and overseas. 
The Prime Minister says the government always exceeds the budgeted amount allocated to students pursuing studies at universities abroad. We have to need to have a, a cut-off period when you can apply and when, you can, when there will be no more applications required. I also believe that we may have to determine a quarter every year. Um, if, it's, if it's 100 students, there will be 100 students um, for this particular year. Um, and to also place certain conditions on the performance of students. And there are situations where students change their majors without the, without the Ministry of Education knowing, um, and so forth. And the other thing too is this. If you're not uh, uh, the island scholar, the support that the government normally gives to students is really assistance to their education. And I, I don't think it's fair for people to give the impression that the government gave everybody a full scholarship and, and, and so forth. Yeah, we have to, we have, you know, and, and, and the sad thing about this is this. You only hear it, uh, about scholarships that we give and people who pretend to, to have interest in students when they see thing that there's something, something not working properly. And, 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 and that kind of attitude is, in, is, is becoming ingrained in our students, our young people, in our parents. And they lose sight of, of, about the, the, the investments that have been made. So, okay, the student, the student did three years, I don't know, four years at the university. And you tell me one semester of all, this, of all, this, um, all of his semesters that the government has not paid the student, that that's, you want, that's what you want to highlight? Had it not been for the government's investment, would that person have gone to university? That's what we have to talk about. And, and, and if that person is back, say 2017, we're in 2020, what, has this person been working? When I came back from university, I didn't get, for so I didn't get one dollar from the government, from any government, went to university, you know, paid with my mother's um, um, financing and credit cards and, and working. When I left university, I was owing. So I couldn't get my, my final diploma. And I worked for a few months and went to the Rosa Credit Union, I was a member there and took a loan from the Credit Union and paid the university, and, and then they, they, they FedEx my document to me. So, so, so you know, we have, to, we have to be fair to ourselves and, and fair to our brother men, you know, um, you know and, and, and fair to our country. Um, so we, whatever commitment we give to students, we will fulfill our commitments. Mr. Skerritt says his government has been at the forefront of creating opportunities for Dominica's young people to attain an education. Whether it is access to early childhood institutions, whether it is access to secondary schools, you know, um, not only access but the means of taking advantage of the access. Whether it's the, we created the state college that now, you know, scores of young Dominicans have access to tertiary education. When we came into office, only 7% of high school graduates had access to the college in Dominica. Now it's 100%. And we have seen a dramatic increase in number of students who are attending university. And not only university or scholarships from friendly governments and so forth, but opportunities that this government, ha government has created and partnerships it has um, engendered with a number of universities across the world. And we try our best to facilitate as many students as possible um, every single term, semester, every single year. You are watching the Channel 5 News. Stay tuned for more after the break. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With Flow, it only gets better. We are strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid. But there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. We're in this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. Welcome back. 
One of the country's youngest hiking clubs is playing its part to recognize the Caribbean Wellness Day on Saturday. Here is Julian Morris with more. Caribbean Wellness Day is observed on the second Saturday in September and came about as the region's response to the epidemic of non-communicable diseases in the Caribbean. Mariana Luge is PRO of the Elite Club, one of the Dominica's new, newer hiking clubs, and says tomorrow's activity will take place in the form of a walk in Portsmouth from TB to Cabritz. It will be basically a virtual walk and different Caribbean countries will be taking part in that event, such as Antigua and Barbuda, Monstrat, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada and Dominica. So it will be done via Zoom platform and we'll, we will be recording the activities in miles and minutes. So we'll be using a fitness app and we'll be posting our miles and minutes through the fitness app. And we'll also be posting the activity on Facebook. Luge says the COVID-19 protocols issued by the Ministry of Health will be observed during Saturday's walk. We are going to be following the protocols of Ministry of Health by practicing social distancing and wearing of masks. So we'll also be maintaining the six feet during the walk. At the end of the event, there will be a virtual fair. Yes, so a virtual fair and uh, there will be wellness experts and fitness trainers. So they will be giving live demonstrations and they will be also educating us on the health and fitness and non-communicable diseases. Other hiking clubs, namely Dwevires and Adventure Seekers, as well as the business community, will be part of the event. Elite Club Executive is hopeful Saturday's activity will help Dominicans take action to live a healthier life. We just want um, persons to maintain a healthy lifestyle and we want to encourage people to exercise watch what they eat, watch what they really consume because that can eventually lead to non-communicable diseases. So we just want to encourage people to come along on the walk and just absorb all the information that is given by our wellness experts and our fitness trainers. The activity will take place from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and participants are encouraged to wear a white shirt and carry a Dominican flag. AstraZeneca has halted phase three of its coronavirus vaccine trial earlier this week following a severe reaction that may or may not have been induced by the vaccine. A woman in the UK who received the vaccine developed neurological issues. She was due to have been discharged on Wednesday. With the global rush to produce a vaccine against COVID-19, the World Health Organization continues to face questions on their safety. WHO says safety and efficacy are critical in the quest to develop a vaccine against COVID-19. There are clear criteria for how drugs and vaccines are evaluated. New drugs and vaccines are evaluated before they are introduced into the population. And when we're talking about vaccines against COVID, we have to be mindful of several things. One, that they're being developed at the fastest speed that we've ever known before, so unprecedented speed. Second, that we're using a number of new platforms, a number of platforms that have not been used in humans before. We're talking here about the RNA and DNA vaccines and also some of the uh, viral vectors that have not been deployed at scale. And, and then, of course, we're talking about using it not on millions of people, but potentially on billions of people. So we have to put into perspective um, the, the introduction of a vaccine, given these, these new circumstances that have not been um, in, the, in the past, and then evaluating the risks and benefits of, of introducing a vaccine before we have adequate data on both efficacy and safety. So efficacy, one would be able to assess based on, on vaccinating a significant number of people, half given the vaccine, the other half not given the vaccine or given a placebo, and then looking at the number of infections in these two groups, and you expect a, a, a reduction of at least 50% uh, in the vaccinated group. Safety is a little more complex because safety involves both immediate side effects, which are quite common with many vaccines. So you may have fever, you may have pain at the local site or swelling, which usually subsides in a couple of days, 
But then you need longer follow-up for side effects, particularly unexpected side effects, which you, you may see only over weeks and months. The WHO would be interested in data on both safety and efficacy in significant numbers of people. So the phase one and two studies are usually done in a few dozen individuals. And while these give you some idea about safety and also an idea about the immunogenicity of the vaccine, what we are really looking for is signals for efficacy and safety in, in during longer follow-up. Now, having said that, national regulatory authorities do have the, the mandate and the power to, to allow uh, use of medical products within their own jurisdictions uh, under certain conditions. And an emergency, a pandemic, is, is one of those conditions where um, national regulatory authorities may consider uh, this type of use. Um, hopefully, this is done under monitored conditions. It's done under what we call the emergency use of products uh, under research settings where, where people who are given the vaccine are followed regularly, are assessed at periodic intervals where data is collected and can be used. But this is only a temporary solution. And the solution, the longer term solution is really completing those phase three trials. The United Nations Deputy Secretary General has reminded finance ministers across the world of their duty to ensure countries emerge from the social and economic chaos brought on by COVID-19. Amina Mohammed addressed ministers from UN member states and representatives from international institutions during a virtual meeting on Tuesday to solidify a menu of policy options for post-pandemic recovery and beyond, which will be presented to world leaders later this month. Although the crisis has affected everyone, Mohammed said the consequences will be worse for the world's most vulnerable citizens. Between 70 to 100 million people could be pushed into extreme poverty. 265 million people could face acute food shortages by the end of this year. An estimated 400 million jobs have been lost, disproportionately affecting women. And look out for live coverage of the Augustus Gregoire Cricket Finals this weekend on Flow Evo. It will be Go Sports Tremors versus Grand Bay Credit Union Colts. Watch live coverage on Flow Evo Channel 105 Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. We are resilient and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious or afraid. But there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community and know that you are not alone. We're in this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. To end the news, the headlines again. Forestry officials increasingly concerned over dwindling population of mountain chicken. One political party calls for a proactive stance against the gun violence in the country. And the walk from Tibet to Cabrist in Portsmouth as hiking clubs observe a Caribbean Wellness Day on Saturday. Feel free to access or pass the newscast on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Louis. And to all of our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful weekend.